Welcome to the Skies Over Colorado for October 2021. This is Staff Astronomer John Ensworth of the Cherrywood Observatory, volunteer at the Little Thompson Observatory for Longmont Public Media. In astronomy news this month, we get a brand new view of Mercury close up. This is courtesy of the Beppe Colombo craft. Pictured here, this is in its uh, initial traveling configuration and eventually it will become two separate uh, craft. It made its first flyby of Mercury. This was October 1st, so just a few days ago. Uh, it will enter orbit ultimately December 25th, 2025. These two link, uh, probes are linked currently. It was launched originally in 2018. It made a few flybys of other planets to begin to enter this uh, orbit. They made a flyby of Earth in April 2020, Venus in both October and August of 2021, and now it's first flyby of Mercury. It'll next return to Mercury uh, June 20th, 2022. And this is your best image right up here. Parts of the craft are visible in the camera view as well. Astronomers and planetary scientists have found evidence that supervolcanoes have occurred on Mars. We knew that uh, volcanism was a big part of the Martian past. Olympus Mons is the largest volcano known in the solar system. Uh, these eruptions occurred over millions of years. Here are the um, craters in the Arabia Terra. Uh, these are filled with a layered rock. Uh, there's evidence of long-term ash release and millions of tons of ash, similar to what we've seen on Earth in the Toba, Indonesia eruptions around 74,000 years ago, and the Taupo, if I said that correctly, New Zealand eruptions of 340,000 years ago. And we can even see evidence of the prevailing winds on Mars and how that shaped the ash fall. Pretty interesting. And our final news story for this month, uh, we have mapped out a supernova cavity carved in space has helped new stars to form. So this particular supernova in our galaxy occurred about 10 million years ago. This is a close-up of its shock wave of compressed gas and dust and little knots of new stars forming the Taurus molecular cloud. This image is courtesy of the uh, European Space Agency. Uh, cleared out a bubble in space 250 light years wide. <clears throat> you can see its location in a artist's rendition of our galaxy. It's a little graphical bubble around it. We've mapped from our sun's position and a side view of bubble in this region and some compressed gas and dust around the edges. So putting together some of the finer structure and star formation regions in our galaxy. Pretty interesting stuff. Star deaths help star births. All right, let's take a look at big star parties. I did a quick glance at these and they do seem to be going. Uh, people are definitely more uh, open to open air events even with the Delta variant going around. Um, so we have a number of star parties in Maine, Pennsylvania. The biggest one for us is Yoki Tech Star Party occurring here at the beginning of the month in Kenton, Oklahoma. We have Pennsylvania, Ohio, Illinois. Uh, Fall Astronomy Day occurs on October 9th. That's largely an internet thing. Uh, in November, there's two more listed, but uh, it does get harder to get uh, deep winter star parties because it becomes quite uncomfortable for the uh, general public to go out and see these things and participate in these events. So pretty much spring and fall are the big times. Summer, the night times are pretty short. And you often have a lot of humidity, bugs, and other unpleasant things. So I got one cleaned up link here for where you can check these out yourself. You can click on the links and see what registration 
might be needed, and if they are, it's still happening. Your Astro 101 lesson for this month is covering what the Harvest Moon is. You may have heard the Harvest Moon mentioned in the last week or two. We actually just had it. Uh, this is the full moon that occurs closest to the autumnal equinox, just a few weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> there are names, traditional names, for full moons each month. If it occurs, the harvest moon occurs closest to the September full moon, the corn moon gets renamed the harvest moon. And if it occurs closest in October, the hunter's moon gets called the harvest moon. Another neat feature of these full moons is because of the geometry of the, um, the sky at this time and the nearness to the equinox where you normally see the moon rising about 50 minutes later each night, 45-50 minutes later, that's the delta, the difference. Uh, in northern latitudes like Europe and Canada, uh, the moon rises only 10 to 20 minutes later uh, for a few days, around full, and at mid-latitudes it's more like 25-30 minutes. So the moon to the casual observer seems to be coming up at just about the same time and staying up throughout the entire night, giving the same amount of illumination each evening. Just for fun, here's a graphic from the Farmer's Almanac, Old Farmer's Almanac, that's different, of Wolf Moon, Snow Moon, Worm Moon, Pink Moon, Flower Moon, Strawberry Moon, Buck Moon, Sturgeon Moon, Corn Moon, Hunter Moon, Beaver Moon, Fall cold moon in December. Right, these can vary regionally. There are different traditions, different names from around the world. So this is just one sort of North American centric list. There is no real astronomical reason for any of that. Alright, October is sky above your backyard. We start the month in the new moon, nothing out there to see. By the 12th, we have our first quarter moon in the sky, so pretty quickly you'll start seeing that sliver down in the southwestern sky. Last year we had a Halloween full moon, and this year it is backed up to the 19th with the closest lunar phase to Halloween being third quarter moon, which won't rise till later in the evening, so you won't really see it uh, as much this year. For the planets, just after sunset, low in the southwestern sky, arising about three hours after sunset is Venus, putting on a very bright show. Mars is too close to see, so nothing to see there, but just after sunset, Jupiter and Saturn are putting on a great show in the eastern sky. Saturn rises at three, Jupiter at four, and Neptune comes up at five, so all three are uh, visible in the sky in the evening. So here's Venus down in the southwest, followed by Saturn on the eastern side of the meridian, Jupiter and Neptune right after sunset. On either side of midnight, Jupiter and Saturn of course are still up, but they're low in the western sky by that time. Neptune is past the meridian, and Uranus is rising at 9, is halfway up in the eastern sky at that time. So here's in this particular moment, mid-month, there's the moon coming up. There's Saturn low in the southwest, followed by Jupiter, Neptune, and there's Uranus. In the morning sky, Neptune is very low in the southwestern horizon. Uranus is west of meridian at dawn, and Mercury is still too close to see. So in the morning sky, if you do get up really early, there isn't much to catch. The big show is happening in the evening. There's Mercury, but it's really lost in the sun's glow still. I have the sun's illumination turned off in the soft wire just to show you the stars. What's the sun doing this month? <coughs> well, at the beginning of the month, it's rising at about 7 a.m. By the end of the month, it's closer to 7.30 a.m. The sunset starts just about 6.45 p.m. and backs all the way up to 
about 6 p.m. at the end of the month. So the day length is dropping from 11 hours 45 minutes down to 10 and a half hours. At noon, the sun is sinking from 47 degrees down to 36 degrees above the southern horizon. So we are definitely getting into that fall and then winter mindset. Our feature object is kind of an unusual one. This is called Herschel's Garnet Star. You can see this with the naked eye. You have to be able to find uh, Cepheus, the sort of kid's house shaped constellation, Cepheus the king up in the northern sky. And right below the base of the house is Mu Cephi. And it is a star that puts out about 100,000 times more light than ours, but uh, deep in the red portion of the spectrum for its peak emission. It's 2,800 light years away, but it, you can see it with your naked eye. It's such a big star that if it was in our solar system, all the planets inside the orbit of Saturn would be inside the star itself. So looking at a big picture here, here's We've looked at the Summer Triangle in the past and the constellations of that. There's Cygnus with Deneb. There's Altair and Vega for the Summer Triangle. Right above them is Cepheus to the north. And right below the base is this dim, uh, bright red star. Uh, dim. Zooming in, it's right there. This is now upside down with the house pointing down. Once you're away from the horizon, there really isn't an up and down in the sky. Your Colorado Observing Challenge is to participate in the International Observe the Moon Challenge. This is uh, run by the Astronomical League. You can go, if you don't want to look up that big crazy link right there, you can just search for Astronomical League Observing Challenge Moon in any favorite search engine and find this and they just call on people to go out and observe the moon just go out and look at it with your eyes or get neighbors and friends out to look at the moon uh, some evening later in the month uh, you can get a little more technical with it and they give you some guidance on try to, trying to estimate the moon's illumination what percent of the uh, fa face of the moon is lit and go further trying to sketch the moon with your naked eye uh, they ask for observations to be made between October 15th and 22nd, so you're going from full, right around the full moon to uh, just beyond. And the deadline for submitting your observations or your activities to their site is November 22nd. So do take a look at that, kind of fun to do. Let's take a look at astronomy events near Longmont. Things are somewhat back to normal. Uh, for some reason, I could not find a speaker at the Longmont Astronomical Society. Uh, their meeting comes up October 21st, starting at 6.30. And because of the Delta variant, they've gone back to Zoom only. Uh, they do have their outside observing uh, back beginning at 5.45 p.m. on October 15th. They won't tell you where unless you register. I think you have to sign some uh, uh, waivers and read their... COVID instructions. Little Thompson Observatory is remaining closed through the end of the year. Estes Park is still allowing small groups, uh, reservations only, and uh, some more COVID restrictions you can read on their site. Northern Cal Colorado Astronomical Society on October 7th, has a speaker, Dr. Joseph Pace, Pace, mess that up, I'm sure. Uh, Monsters in the Universe, New Insight into Black Holes. Get details on their site. Fisk Planetarium has reopened, and they have shows listed that you may uh, purchase tickets for and instructions on parking. And their uh, observatory has opened most Friday nights. Now that school has begun again in the fall, you can look at details there at their site. Since we ran out of software to talk about uh, that I have personal experience with for desktop applications, 
I've decided to do for a few months here historical missteps in astronomy in about 30 seconds. So this month's first misstep is an understandable one. It's the geocentric model. This goes all the way back to Greek astronomy and philosophy. Around 500 BC is the first records of that. Plato and Aristotle solidified this model and it got refined a little bit around 240 BC when Aristophanes made measurements of the shadow cast at noon on the summer solstice uh, in latitudes in north and south of each other and that angle of the shadow gave a very accurate representation of the uh, our result for the size of the earth so the spherical earth became uh, a known thing so we had a spherical earth being uh, orbited by all these other bodies including the sun they knew that the moon mercury and venus could go in front of the sun so they had to be in a circle closer to us than the sun the other planets the superior planets went behind at times and it wasn't until almost 2,000 years after that came on the scene, that's a long time, the Copernican uh, system was introduced in De Revolutionibus Orbium Colestium. My Latin is rusty. In fact, I don't know Latin at all. Uh, but this is translated as the revolutions of the heavenly spheres. Galileo Galilei, December 1610, helped solidify this with many observations after, but the fact that Venus went through phases really could only be explained with a sun-centered uh, solar system with a planet that go is going around it from our point of view. Any additions or corrections or suggestions, please email me at johnensworth at gmail.com. Put in the subject line something about the astronomy program here, and I will uh, be able to pull that out of all the spam that I get. This has been The Skies Over Colorado for October 2021. Staff is trying to John Ensworth, urging you to keep looking up.